Greenhouses are great for giving gardeners an option for a longer season. During the spring and fall, they make cool days warm for the plants inside. But what about the middle of summer when the days are hot and the greenhouse is even hotter? Join me today as I show you how I grow in my greenhouse in summer. Hi, I'm Gardner Scott, and this is my greenhouse from Planta Greenhouses. Last year was my first year growing in this greenhouse, and I had a pretty successful crop of potatoes and tomatoes that I grew inside over the course of the summer. I learned a lot in that first year, much that I could put into practice this year, and I have a lot more plants growing. I think it's very important for gardeners who are new to greenhouses to spend some time figuring out their own greenhouses. All greenhouses are different, and figuring out how your greenhouse works can give you the best success with your plants in the spring, the summer, the fall, and potentially into the winter. One of the first things you should get and put into practice with your new greenhouse is a thermometer. And this is my wireless remote thermometer that I use to monitor the temperature inside. I've been monitoring the temperature inside my greenhouse since I first constructed it, so that I could have an idea of how quickly it warms up during the day, how hot it gets during the day, and how warm it stays over the course of the night. But most importantly, I've been monitoring the temperature so that I can figure out how I can control the temperature inside. I like the wireless remote thermometer because I can see how hot my greenhouse is from the comfort of my easy chair. And I can compare my greenhouse temperature with the outside temperature by looking at the readout from my weather station. And so I know that the outside air temperature right now is 77 degrees Fahrenheit, and the temperature inside my greenhouse is 82 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's pretty consistent with what I've found over the course of the last few months. During the morning, I can keep my greenhouse about 5 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than the outside air. The sun has already been up for about three hours. And when I started doing the initial tests of how quickly my greenhouse would warm up, when I closed up the greenhouse and kept it closed, in that same three hour period, the inside of the greenhouse would easily be 25 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than outside. The key is the ventilation. One of the reasons I chose the Planta greenhouse is because it has a door on one end and I have the option for a ventilation window above and actually as many ventilation windows as I need, I chose to put in two windows. But more importantly, it has a door on the other side as well. And each of the doors is split with the primary door on the bottom with a separate window panel on the top. So I can open just the top, just the bottom, or both together. And this design is critical for me when growing in a greenhouse during the summer because the key to summer growing is ventilation. If there's no air movement, the heat just builds up and builds up and gets too hot for the plants. You need to release the heat during the summer. In those cool months, you want to keep that heat in to a point. And so having the ability to open up various panels and doors and the upper ventilation windows really gives me great control over the heat inside my greenhouse. I can keep it from getting too hot for my plants. This year I'm growing black cherry tomatoes. 
I have a number of super hot chili pepper plants, some fig trees, more tomatoes in pots. And while these plants really like hot weather, they begin to suffer if the temperature rises above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. That's because when the temperature gets that hot, pollination effectively ceases. The pollen can be killed, the blossoms on the flowers can begin to drop, and you won't have any fruit set. Well, why grow tomatoes and peppers if you're not going to get any of that fruit? So my target is to try to keep the temperature inside my greenhouse below that 90 degrees Fahrenheit as much as possible. The ventilation is critical, but to help keep the temperatures down over the course of the day, I've added shade cloth to the top of my greenhouse. This helps drop the temperature so that it doesn't get excessively hot. I've had a series of days recently where the outside air temperature was above that 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And you can expect that the inside temperature is going to be at least as hot as it is outside. Well, with the shade cloth and the ability to ventilate that hot air, I've been able to keep my temperature only about seven to eight degrees Fahrenheit warmer than the outside air. And so you may be thinking that, well, my greenhouse gets hotter than that threshold that I'm trying to stay below. And that's true. My greenhouse has gotten as high as 98 degrees Fahrenheit pretty regularly in the last few days. And on one occasion, it did get up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. But most of the pollination is happening early in the day. So if I can keep the temperature cooler when the pollination is happening, I can keep the flowers from dropping and I can help ensure that fruit set. And I can see that it's working because all of these tomatoes have formed in just the last couple of weeks, the hottest weeks of the year. And as I go up the plant, the flowers are still on and I still have other fruit that's beginning to form on some of the side branches. That excessive heat only happens during a couple hours in the afternoon, but the plant is able to grow normally and set the fruit. And so I can see that my strategy of shade cloth and good ventilation is working. And I've got other proof to show what happens when that doesn't work. My container pots that are growing closest to the side, I noticed have had some leaf damage on those hottest days. I haven't lost the blossoms yet, so I'll probably get some fruit, but out this side window, there's no shade. So these plants actually get direct sunlight and pretty harsh sunlight more than any other plants in the greenhouse. Another important thing I'm doing is to water these plants every day early in the day so that as the conditions get hot, the plants always have the cool, moist soil to help them out. At no point are they going to be stressed because their roots are drying out. A healthier plant, a stronger plant, is going to be able to fight off the effects of the sun better than a struggling plant. I'm able to have control over the temperature variance because I can get the airflow from one side of the greenhouse to the other, and the hot air can vent out the top. But what do you do if you don't have a planter greenhouse like I do? If you've only got one door or maybe only one vent, what options do you have at that point? I'm using a 30% shade cloth. You might want to think about doing a 40% or a 50% or maybe even a 60% shade cloth for your greenhouse to cut down the intensity of the sun's rays 
and help keep it cooler. But it's still all about the ventilation when it comes to what control you have over the temperature. Think about adding more ventilation if you're monitoring the temperature and seeing that it's getting too hot. You might want to consider cutting a hole in the end of your greenhouse away from the door and putting in some ventilation fans to act as exhausts to pull the air through the greenhouse and to the outside. Even with all my doors and windows and upper vents, I'm even thinking of adding some ventilation fans to the back wall. Because while the breeze is blowing through here, it helps keep things cool, at least closer to the outside ambient air temperature. But when there's no wind and when the sun is glaring down into the greenhouse, even the shade cloth isn't enough to keep the temperature down. That's when I've seen the highest measurements inside. So if I can artificially create that airflow through the greenhouse out one of the walls, I think I'm going to have even better control over the temperature inside. So I'm looking at a solar powered fan, the kind that are typically used in chicken coops to keep the chickens cooler. Having one or two of those in this greenhouse should give me pretty much the ultimate control in keeping the temperature from being too extreme for my plants. I also have more than 200 gallons of water in barrels and containers in my greenhouse. The primary purpose of this water is to generate heat during the cool months because this water will absorb the warmth during the day and release it at night. So I'll be able to keep growing when it's getting cold outside. But the key point of that is that the water is absorbing heat during the day. So by having all this water in the greenhouse, it's helping to keep the temperature down. It's absorbing a lot of that heat before it can heat the air and affect my plants. I saw that effect right away after I put the water in and continued to monitor the temperature. Early in the day, the greenhouse wasn't warming as quickly. In fact, it was staying five to 10 degrees Fahrenheit cooler than it had been in the preceding weeks. The water was absorbing the sun's energy. Now, that only works to a point. In the afternoon, after the water is as hot as it's going to get, then the rest of the greenhouse begins to warm up. I've been able to keep that under control within the parameters that I'm trying to maintain, but the extra ventilation might help. I think it's evident in how good these plants are looking after being confronted by some near record temperatures that I've had over the last couple of weeks. But even by keeping the temperature under control and keeping the plants healthy, you can't disregard all the normal gardening practices. Sometimes the plants will get bigger than your greenhouse. And so while I'm trellising the tomato plant to keep it under control, it's getting to the point that it's growing too tall. It's reaching up to the top of the greenhouse, which means it's time to start thinking about pinching off some of the tips so it doesn't grow much taller. And of course, I have to continue to weed the garden so that they don't overtake the space because the weeds like the temperatures inside here as well. And of course, I have to keep harvesting because that's why I'm doing this. I know everything is working right when I can reach inside and harvest a black cherry tomato. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's so wonderful. When I can eat right off the vine, I know I'm doing things right. If you want to see more about how I set up the greenhouse and reach this point, 
Go ahead and watch one of these videos next. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening. <music>